Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Zandria. Welcome to 80 Vibe, and this is Take You There. Trust these black mirrors. Perception is deception. They're missing your directions, misdirection. I'm trying to give you real love. I'm trying to give you feeling. I know you miss that feeling like. Ooh, na, na, na. I can hear your body calling out for my skin, soul, and mind. I got something special for a whole lifetime. This is not the
your favorite star tender, Ty Nicole, and you're watching Dondria on 80 Vibe. Our cocktail that we're going to be crafting up today is going to be the Little Miss Fat Fat. So first, we're going to grab our mixing tins and we're going to muddle some fresh lemons and oranges. So go ahead, grab your oranges, grab your lemons, add them into your mixing tin. And then we're going to grab some of that ginger mint syrup and some of our fresh lemon juice. Now, Ms. Dondria is drinking a mocktail today, so we're not adding any alcohol. Once you have those ingredients in your mixing tin, grab your muddler and we're going to muddle together all of those ingredients. All right. Now we're gonna add some simple syrup to our mixing tins. And a little bit more lemon juice. All right, now go ahead and add some ice into your mixing tin. Now this cocktail will be served up, so we will be using our martini glass. Once you have your ice in your mixing tin, go ahead and give it a great shake. All right, look at that. Grab your martini glass, place it in front of you. You're gonna grab your strainer, and this time we will be doing a double strain. So we're gonna grab a mesh strainer as well. We're gonna strain our mixture right into our martini glass. Look at that. And then we're gonna add a little bit of hibiscus syrup to the bottom for a beautiful float. To do that, grab your bar spoon, turn it upside down, and we're going to pour our syrup up against the back of that spoon. And look at that beautiful float. All right. Once you have floated your hibiscus syrup, go ahead and let's grab our lemon to garnish. Perfect. And that is a little Miss Fat Fat. Cheers. Anybody fuck with Snoop Doggy Dog, I'ma have my niggas put his name, name on the wall. I put his name on the wall. Where's and that's if anybody put fuck with Snoop Doggy Dog. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We back in the new studio. Just in case you didn't know, got the camera operator and he going Sometimes like I this. I sit in my room and then I stare at the wall and in the back of my mind, I, I hear my conscience, conscience call. Telling me I need a girl who's as sweet as a dove for the first time in my life. I see I need love. There I was, giggling about the game. Said I done played with many hearts, but I ain't saying no names. So you ain't, ain't saying, saying no names that I done played with many hearts, but I ain't saying no names. Okay. Broken glass everywhere. If it ain't about the money, see, we just don't care. I said, yeah, we, we just, just don't care. care. If it ain't about the money, then we just don't care. I said, a child is born with no state of mind. Blind to the ways of mankind. God is smiling on you, but he's frowning too. Cause only God knows what you go through. You hey. in the ghetto living second rate. And the place you stay is full of deep hate. The places you lay in where you stay looks like one great big alleyway. This year, Halloween fell on the weekend. Me and Chico being trick or treat. Yes, yes. Robbing little kids for bags. Until this old man got behind our ass. And so we speeded up the pace. I took a look back. And he, he was, was right before, before my face. face. And he was in for a swap and no doubt. So I swung and hit the nigga, nigga in his mouth. mouth. <laughs> I'm six or seven feet. Now that's, that's the, the nigga I be seeing in my sleep. So we triple teamed on him. Dropping them motherfucking beans on them. The more I swung, the more blood flew. Then he disappeared. And my boys disappeared too. Then I felt just like a fiend. It wasn't even close to Halloween. It was dark as fuck on the streets. My hands was all bloody from punching on the concrete. God damn, homie. I said my, my mind's playing, playing tricks on me. Hey. I say my mind's playing tricks on me. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey. I said my mind's playing tricks on me. 
Yes, indeed. This is the 85. Hey, the one and only. Any goddamn thing on there, Chico. It don't matter what it is. It's a rare condition this day and age. The reading some good news on, on the, the newspaper page. page. Love a condition, the family side. Some people say it's, it's even harder to find. Hey. Some people say it's, it's even harder to find. find. Even harder. Oh, we. Oh, we. I said in West Philadelphia, born and raised. Get a mic to Dondria because she about to go crazy. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what I can come up with. Man, hold up. Man, what it do? It's your girl, Dondria, and I came through. Sitting on the mic, about to turn up. We in the room with the drinks, pull up. That was hard. That was hard. Thanks. Welcome back to another season of 80 Vibe. Man, y'all clapping. Y'all behind the camera. Yeah. 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 That's right. I am Chico Bean here with, you know, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Hello, everybody. It's Jojo Alonzo, the baddest Boricua in the game. The baddest Boricua in the game. I don't know what game, but she the baddest one in it. For know sure. That. And we are here with the one and only Dondria one of the most talented young ladies in the world, and I mean that sincerely. I have For been sure. a fan of this lady since she came out with one of my favorite songs. I feel it all over my body. <laughs> I dream about you when I sleep. Yeah. Hey, you're, you're the, the one, one for me. me. Yeah. Hey, man. So Ooh. thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and sitting with us here on 80 Vibe, Dondre. Yeah. I appreciate you. Before we get started, mm -hmm. we like the big gifts here, so. Oh, I got you are. It. Yeah, open it up, see what we got you, baby. Okay. Yeah. Oh, how cute. Look at that. Like, oh, and it's a crowd top. It's a crowd top. You get to show them your ass. Yeah, okay. you get to show them your ass. Definitely been in the gym. Thank you. All the way. You got some else oh, in there, a, too. Oh, it's a whole it's a situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're very this welcome. This is exciting. That's You're a... very welcome. Let me take Thank that from you. me. I just wanted you to see how we treat our guests over here at 85. Okay. Now, yeah, that's the perfect color. I love and that. To get, to, get, to get on right into it, man, you just did an uh, amazing performance with Thank us on you. 80 Vibe. So my first question is, how did you get started? You know, tell the people your story. That thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> condensed version. So um, 2006, somebody told me to go look at a fight on YouTube. Now, at this time, YouTube is not what YouTube is right now. Facts. It was very new, very fresh. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people was really on it. I went on there to look at a fight, and I saw some people on the side um, looking like they were singing. So I clicked it, and I was like, hold on, people sing on here? Like, let me find out. So I, I just I got a little $15 webcam from Walmart, mm -hmm. um, set it up, and, you know, I started singing. And my whole premise was not to get discovered or, like, I wasn't even thinking about any type of professional yeah. career. I, I think I, at that time, a lot of people wasn't really doing singing on YouTube for mm -hmm. real or getting discovered on YouTube right. like that, like they are now. Yeah. So, okay, I feel that. I just wanted to, um, so y'all know, like, on American Idol, when, like, the people were going there, they're like, my mom said I could sing, mm -hmm. or, you know, my granny, I sing to her all the time, and then they get on stage, and they sound a hot-ass mess. Right. So I wanted to go on the internet and see like what strangers would say because my parents and family they were very supportive but i really wanted to know like the, the real truth and it happened to be a, a positive one a so, positive one yeah. that's beautiful you happen now. to have a beautiful voice thank too. you thank you thank all you. the way now like i said i've been a fan since you came out um that song you know you're the one for me i remember when i first heard the song i was living in north carolina which i still live in north carolina but i was living in north carolina it's a radio station called 102 jams and they would play the hot new song mm -hmm. and you would have to pick between three songs and one of your song was one of them and i heard it and it's just like they don't make music like that anymore meaning mm -hmm. when a woman make a mistake mm -hmm. you think that there's no more accountability music for the ladies and when i heard that song even back then it was something fresh and new so where did the idea for you're the one for me come from. So um, I can't really take any of the writing credit on that song. JD, Jermaine Dupri, um, Brian Michael Cox, they teamed up and created that masterpiece. Um, and I think that 
you know, from what they gathered on YouTube, they wanted to create a timeless song, a classic song mm -hmm. that would allow me to show my vocal um, and, you know, be the young, pretty girl that like, oh, no, but we sing. Like, we don't, we don't, we're not doing the ABC one, two, three thing. Right. Yeah. How was how was that moment when you got discovered on YouTube? Like, where were you? What were you doing? Uh, like, and what? How did you feel? So it happened so fast, and I'd say all the time. Like now, I journal a lot yeah. because I just there's not a lot that I remember because it was just happening so fast. So all of this happened in a year of me being on YouTube. Um, I think it got really real when JD hit me on MySpace, I think it was, mm -hmm. um, and he, we exchanged numbers, he called me, and I didn't answer because I didn't know the number, um, but then he left a message, and I'm like, hold on, okay, this sound like him. I called everybody in my phone, does this sound like Jermaine Dupree? Like, we had a whole conference call listening to my voicemail, um, and so I think at that moment, I knew it was real, and I, I just couldn't believe, like, I'm from the suburbs, I'm from, like, a small town, right. you know, in Texas, um, so I just, that wasn't even anything that I could ever imagine. Imagine yeah. what it happened. Now, your first album, Dondria versus Fat Fat, now, Fat Fat is my daughter's nickname, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's my baby's nickname, so where did that come from? Like, because I know that, you know, having the different personalities is something that people do now, but mm -hmm. back then it wasn't really, especially for a female artist, right. it wasn't looked at, you know, as, as prevalent as it is now. So what made you go with that as your first album title? So actually, uh, my college roommate gave me that nickname. Um, we met at orientation. We went to CC's Pizza. And I was hearing the pizza up. Mm. I, I think I had a whole, like, pizza to myself. And she was just like, Oh, no, nah, your name, we calling you Fat Fat. And from 19 all the way up to now, I've been Fat Fat. All the way off of CC's Pizza. <laughs> okay, Y'all yeah. need to go ahead and yeah. get that sponsorship going. <laughs> Dondria for CC's Pizza. Yeah. Now, you know, that was in 2010, and of course, a lot of time has passed since then. So how did you keep yourself motivated in the music industry? Because when you get that level of success so quickly, it can mm -hmm. kind of jade you if mm -hmm. you don't continue to see that level of success throughout the time that you are in the industry and you see a lot of people come and go so what has kept you active and motivated since 2010 till now shoot I don't even know I mean there was definitely a, a space in there where I was not um, motivated um, I have this song called let it be which is like a love song to music for me and it just kind of talks about like the what I had to go through like I, I know that I made some mistakes I think a lot of it was from me just not knowing and being so young and not having, like JD and B. Cox and them, they were there, but I didn't have like a woman, you know, to just pour into me and like teach me the game, mm -hmm. let me know what's up. And so it was very hard um, kind of transitioning from the height of You're the One in my first album to really not even knowing what was next. Um, so I don't know, I mean, I, I prayed um, I ended up going to therapy um, because I had a lot of um, anxiety and I was suffering from depression. Um, I just, I don't know. I had to grow up in that space. I had to just point back inward. And, right. So yeah. with everything that you say, you know, you went through some things. Um, is that what made you want to get into helping other people with their like mental health and things like that? Because I know that that's, that you're doing that as well. Yeah. I, you know, being a black woman and just being able to understand um, what black people go through, the trauma that we experience, mm -hmm. um, especially when we're younger, um, you know, those things develop us. They mold us into the, the adults that we are. And I just know how much um, being open and it was it was hard, you know, I, growth and <laughs> healing is not easy um, but just Looking back at everything that I've gone through and being on the other side and like just feeling free and Really for the first time feeling like Myself like who I was meant to be like everybody should feel like this like yeah. I want to help you know inspire mm -hmm. motivate like we all should be out here shining yeah. and um Sometimes we just got to go back in and like fix that stuff.
But that's good, though, that you're doing that for other people because, like you said earlier, that, like, you didn't have that woman that mm -hmm. can pour into you. And I felt, I've, I've been in a place in my life where I felt the same way. Like, as a woman, I feel like we should always be trying to help each other and mm -hmm. pour into each other. So I, I appreciate that from you. Thank because you. a lot of us need to do that. Women, yeah. so women, yeah. black women, we need to do that for each other. Yeah, and I do want to shout out Brad um, because she has been, like, such a great big sister. Um, Unfortunately, when I was coming up, she went away, so she wasn't there physically to, you know, be what she is for me now. But she's she's been amazing. She's been like the best big sister. Salute to the brat. Yeah. Now, knowing what you know now, being as though you went through the transition that you went through and the growth that you went through, like what steps do you take now that you didn't when you first started that help you stay in a position where you're mentally stable and able to handle all of the things that comes with the music industry and the, and the stress and strain that, that entails? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, first, just like my quiet time is very important to me. Um, every morning I get up, I got that journal out, I got me a little incense burning, you know, I'm praying, I'm meditating, I'm planning out my day. Um, that's very, very helpful. And then externally, I have, <laughs> <laughs> walked away from so many friendships and God has allowed some people to walk away from me the mm -hmm. ones that I couldn't say goodbye to myself he, do um, he will do that for sure um, yeah so I'm around people that want the best for me that ride for me that support me mm -hmm. um, I'm starting to create these relationships and these sisterhoods within the music industry um, which you know like coming up the women that I looked up to a lot of them was not checking for your girl. You know, they was looking at me like I was going to take their spot, I think. And they just, they weren't welcoming. Mm -hmm. um, and they, yeah, it was just hard. I just felt alone in that space. So um, switching up my circle, making sure that I'm having that time to myself and with God um, and just being intentional every day. And, and understanding, I had to like reprogram my mind that like I am actually like my own boss. And I do control my own life. So um, if whenever I feel, because I've gone through like control issues too, whenever I feel like I don't know what's going on, I just remind myself like you make your own decisions. You can do what you want to do. You choose this. Yeah. And it works. That's what's up. Now, as far as content, you know, the actual content that you sing about and the things that you, you know, put out, like do you have more of a say now? Because I you heard you say that Brian Michael Cox and, and JD kind of, you know, had their hands in your first album, but now that you went through the transition that you went through, do you feel more inclined to, you know, produce your own sound and your own messaging and your music? Is that more, you know, important for you now, knowing yes. what you know? Yes, yes, very important. Um, you know, I'm thankful that the situation with them, with So So Deaf, even though I, I didn't really know what I wanted, therefore I didn't speak up much. I just kind of went with the flow. Mm. Um, thankfully, it was in alignment with who I am and who I'm becoming. Um, but now, oh yes, I'm, I'm in the studio. I'm, I don't know how to press the buttons, but I know sounds, you know, so I might be like, can you do the doo doo doo? Can you do that? You know, like I'm very, very hands on. Um, I want to break down here, okay, here, like with lyrics, writing, very, very hands-on. That's very important to me. All yeah. the way. Now, is there a song that you would say describes where you are now? If you can, you know, for those of, that might not know who Dondria is and mm -hmm. you don't necessarily want to send them all the way back to 2010, mm -hmm. where would you direct people to go to get in contact with who you are and what you want them to know about you? What song would you direct them to? Hmm. Um, I would... I would do a, a mashup, right? Okay. So the first song would be Good Company. Um, it's a fun record, and for those that do know Dondria, I haven't really ever done like fun, like up tempo, yeah. like I, I never really was in that lane. Um, but then I was like talking to my co-writer, and he was like, "You twerk every time the beat drop. Like, why don't you have music that reflects that?" And I was like. You're right. Like, but I just thought that I could only sing the ballads or about love because that's that's how I was introduced to the world. Um, not really taking into consideration, like, no, you can do whatever you want to do. So, yeah. good company. Um, it's fun and it just talks about like who I want around me. I want 
good vibes. I want people that ride for me, that want the best for me. You gotta dance. Shake the ass. Look, you gotta dance. have a problem. Yeah, yeah like getting down. Lesson. Like we're not in the VIP lounge sleeping on drinks on the couch. Like we, we turn it up. CC's pizza Hello. shaking our ass. <laughs> That's what we doing. Yes. Um, and we're gonna mash that into Let It Be because it's just, it's like my, um, Redeclaration. Um, you know, like I've been through a lot and it almost took me out, but I ain't go all the way out. And, and now I'm back with a new perspective, which is the name of my EP. Um, and here to stay. Yeah, and I got something to say. All the way. Stand I on love that. it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Now, I've been listening to you for a long time and I, you know, know that it's difficult to kind of hone your sound. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I know that, you know, motivation comes from everywhere. So, you know, where's some of the, or who are some of the people that have influenced you and still continue to influence you in music? My number one influence is Whitney Houston. She's, yeah, she done been that for me from day one. Yeah. Um, and I think what I love most about her, I mean, we all love her voice. Um, I love her spirit. And I also love that she, um, to find the type of music that she made as just like music. It's not white music, it's not black music, mm -hmm. it's just good music. Um, and that's the space that I'm in. So Whitney, um, the original Destiny's Child, mm -hmm. boy, when I was in middle school. No, 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 I'm telling no, you. no. And then say yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. All right now. And then say no, 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 no. Okay. That's that hit right there, that, boy. Boy, that album right that there. That's a good one. Yeah, it was a classic. It yeah. was. That opened my mind to like all types of possibilities. Just seeing those four girls, four black girls, um, mm -hmm. you know, killing it. Like they was they was it for me. And they uh, Texas girls. And they're from Texas. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um <laughs> gospel music is I grew up singing in church, so that mm -hmm. is a lot of my sound as well. Um I love me some tank. He was a major influence. I remember um, listening to all his runs and running them back and singing them until I got them down. Like, he was a major influence. Those are like the top, yeah, That's those are the dope. top ones. Tank is, is unique because I'm a huge Tank fan yeah, too, Tank but Tank dope. used to sing background for Genuine mm -hmm. and background for Dave Hollister. And if you listen to a lot of the old music, uh, like Dave Hollister, uh, girl, I gotta go, mm -hmm. I can't stay. That's Tank on the back of there, all, just yeah. doing all of them runs. And like, you know, being a f black woman in the industry, you know, it's so much that, you know, you guys just have to go through as black women in general. Mm -hmm. So if you were giving advice to any of the young black women that are aspiring or just getting into the music industry, what would you say are some of the most important characteristics for them to have coming in? to give that game that you necessarily didn't get. So yeah. what would be some of the things that you would tell a young artist, a young black woman that's talented and trying to get into this industry? I think the one thing, and it might even be the only thing, is to just trust yourself. Like, mm. everybody's gonna try to tell you how they think it should go, you know, what you should wear, how you should have your hair, what you should sing about. But you know, like inside, and this is just really for anybody, you know what's inside, like what you really, really feel. You know in your gut when something don't feel right, mm -hmm. you know, but you go against it, maybe you're scared or maybe somebody's persuaded you to, but you know. And um, as women, it's even more important because it's easy to like be in a situation, you know, that could be dangerous, you know, or like, just detrimental to you or your life, you know what I mean? So like, just trust yourself, trust your gut, like, and continue to become like the best version of yourself. The more you improve, like, the possibilities are endless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I, we are truly like magical people. So it, trust yourself, like, you know, you know. You definitely know, cause yeah. that gotta be like, yeah. don't go in there, do not you know. go in there. Okay, okay. Well, so what is? Know. I'll go ahead, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What is one of the biggest obstacles that you've had to overcome being in this industry? Mm. Speaking up, mm. speaking up for myself. Do you think that was just because? Is it just because you just were a little? scared to? Was it because you were a female in the industry or you didn't want to feel like you were stepping on anybody's shoes? Um, I guess 
I was timid. I was very timid. I hadn't yet found my voice. Mm. Um, and then two, I think I've had to relearn this <laughs> lesson so many times. I think I finally got it. But when I allow people to come into my life to help, I would always feel like some sort of um, debt to them. Mm. And so when it's time to say no or speak up and, and go against you yes. know what they thought or said, I would just feel I feel, I be feeling that. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. So how'd you get, how did you overcome that feeling of like always feeling like that? Yeah. Um, I honestly, you know, it's like you can only take so much to be, to be real. I, it, I just got to a point where I was like, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. Like I'm a grown ass woman and I'm listening and doing what somebody else tells me to do all the way down to them controlling my money. Like mm. just, I had no control over my life, mm -hmm. none. Like I was living with them, I didn't have no car. Like I was dependent on this person to get me through life and get me through my career. And just one day I was just like, this is not how it's supposed to be. Like, like I said earlier, like I'm in control. Yeah. This person cannot be, I mean, I'm okay. Oh, yeah. This person cannot be successful without me. That part. I can get myself in rooms that, like, this person has to say my name to get, to right. get into the room. They have to say that they're with me. Like, I, he doesn't have as much control as he thinks he does. Mm -hmm. So I just have to get a little reality check with that. It sounds like you grew to trust yourself more. Yeah. And that's very difficult to do for anybody, you know, male or female. But what do you think is the, the biggest, you know, c contribution to you? being able to trust yourself more? Is it the fact that you went through all of those things and learned, or is it just something within yourself that made you realize, like, hey, fuck these people. Mm -hmm. I'm straight. Yeah, uh, um, <laughs> a combination of everything. And then I feel like a lot of the situations that would come where I had to just figure it out myself, and it worked, and it added to my confidence. Like, okay, mm -hmm. I do know what I'm doing, you know? Or like, I remember um, on my first album, um, JD gave me a track, all these tracks and songs they done wrote and produced for me and I just came into the studio and sang them. But this one particular track, he just gave me the track and said, write something to it. And I was like, okay, hold on. Like y'all got Grammys and all other kinds of awards. Y'all done broke records and you want me to write on your track. But I went in that room and I wrote that song and it is consistently from 2010 to 2023, my top, three song that people stream and listen to to Which this day. Um, where did we go wrong? Is it something I said or is it something I did? Okay. Is it something I told you? I'm a fan. Yeah. I'm yeah. a fan. I was riding around. It. You don't know how many times I got caught in the light like, nigga, what, who didn't <laughs> broke your heart? Nigga? Whoever yeah. wrote this song, that's who. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but that's one of my favorite songs off Thank the album you. too. So you wrote that yourself. Yeah. All the way. Now, being as though you have that skill set, that writer's, you know, that pen, mm -hmm. who are some of your favorite pens? That's a great question. Um, I gotta go back to Tank. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm even, I'm gonna shout out my girl Money Long. I love mm -hmm. Money Long. I'm gonna shout out my, my girl Money Long. Money Long. Money Long is so talented, man. Yeah, I discovered is. her. See, that's what I feel like I'm like an A&R that don't get the credit because I be discovering people before they come out. But Money Long um, got a song called Bodies that mm. I heard and she's talking about a dude asking about how many bodies she has mm -hmm. and it's the, the way that the song is written is so it's so amazing like so just you know salute the money long man we got to get you in here too yes. cause, you know what I mean but um so you say tank mm -hmm. money bunny um I'm gonna I'm go left field with it and I'm gonna say Kirk Franklin that pen yeah how's is that amazing pen? yeah that <laughs> like how Chris Brown Amazing writer, and then I had one more person that was just on the tip of my tongue, um, Jasmine, Jasmine Sullivan. Okay. Um, but that's not who I was gonna say. Um, the female. I don't know. That's a couple. Brand that's Park. a few. Yeah, that's we a have few. them all. That the was time. A, that was yeah, that was a couple though. You know, yeah. oh, some Definitely. of mine is Babyface, of course. Oh yes. Smokey Robinson. Yes. Yeah. Um, as cliche as this is going to sound. R. Kelly. Hey. I mean, it, you it is what it, it is. You, you know what I mean? It. I mean on if the, you know, on the you know. Yeah. Tank, of course. Um, 
I love what money is doing now with the pen. Um, it's a young lady that uh, that Diddy just signed. What is her name? Jojo? Jazzy. Jazzy. Mm. She's an amazing writer, too. Like, do you think that that's something that needs to be stressed more, um, especially amongst females, to be able to pen their own music, to not be dependent upon, you know, a man to come in and give you your perspective, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm a collaborator. You know, I do believe that we are here to collaborate with people, to fellowship and create with one another. Um, but I do think that that should be a prerequisite. Like, you should know what you want to talk about, and you should at least, well, you should be able to articulate it, you know? Yeah. Like, I, yes, absolutely. If you were in a room by yourself and you had no other option, you should be able to come out with a song. Now, song structure, you mm -hmm. know, that's something that I don't think a lot of people, because, you know, you can write something, but being able to structure a song, like, who do you think, gave you personally the best, you know, knowledge in how to actually sh not just structure it, but make a hit record. Like, mm -hmm. where did you get, you think you got that, those chops from the most in, the, in your journey through the industry? I mean, I think I would have to give J.D. and B. Cox um, mm -hmm. and Jonte Austin. Jonte. J.D., B. Cox, well. Jonte Austin, and um, Chris Style. Um, and um, um, Emmanuel. Those four or five people, um, I mean, they, they really, they molded me, you know, they helped to, um, I think I was in the last, like, <laughs> class of artist development, you know, so, like, they really helped me to, like, hone in on um, just how to do that. They, they, them alone, they got all the hits, you know, so it was, yeah, that's, I think that's where it got, um, that's where songwriting was, um, I was empowered to songwrite and then also like inspired to try things too. Um, a lot of times J.D. would bring me in the studio, still does. I have some vocals on um, Division's new album. Okay. Um, you know, he would trust me to come in and do a vocal arrangement or to do harmonies. That's one of the things that um, he loves about me is my harmonies, you know, my backgrounds. Um, but yeah, just, being in the room and allow them allowing me the space to to do that and just try shit like yeah trust myself too yeah all the way how long does it typically make like so say you go you write these lyrics you go to the studio and you make a hit track how long does that take for you to make um i think that Every day is different, you know. It might be a I've I've gone into the studio and wrote a whole EP in a week, mm. um, and then <laughs> this last EP it took two years, you know. So like, I it, it depends on the vibe, it depends on the flow. Mm -hmm. um, I try I'm I don't know I don't have a, a. Do you ever put a time limit on when you're creating music, like, or do you just go with the flow of things? Like, I think I just go with the flow. Yeah, we talked a little bit about this outside. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think that you should put my personal opinion. I don't think that you should put pressures on yourself. Yeah, I think that that is unhealthy. I think that you should always be intentional um, and set realistic goals. You mm -hmm. know, for yourself, timely goals. But I don't think that you should be like, I have to do this or. You know, because what what happens if something happens and you don't do that? Right. Now you're beating yourself up. And, For no reason. Yeah, and maybe now you don't believe in yourself as much or, you know, like, I don't, yeah. I think you should go with the flow. I'm, I be in the clouds sometimes, mm -hmm. but I do believe that you should flow intentionally. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, don't, right. I don't do that. Pressure. Another thing that I love about you, you got singers, then you got people that can sing. You can sing. For Thank sure. You. I mean, Thank for you. real, can blow. So, you know, just somebody that's a performer, you know, I know how important it is to just vocal maintenance, mm -hmm. to make sure that your voice is right. Like, what's a tip that you would give a young singer that might not have the understanding of what it takes to maintain a strong yeah. voice? Yeah. Um, first of all, <laughs> water. Drink your water, okay? <laughs> you should be drinking however much you weigh, you should be drinking half of that in ounces of water every day, okay? 
just drink your water. Put the Mountain Dews down. Sure later. Put the Mountain sure. Dews down. Count. You know, I'm, I'm a tea new. drinker. I may drink a coffee mm -hmm. every now and then, but it ain't the best for you because it's dehydrating. Okay, hydrate yourself. Um, and you know, I have had so many conversations with my fellow singers, and these niggas are not warming up. They're not practicing. They're trusting that their gift is going to show up for them like it always does. Mm -hmm. And it is right now. But you're not going to be able to maintain that and be a household name and still be singing at 50 and 60 years old if you want to. If you're not taking care of your voice, like honoring the gift that God has given you. How do you warm up? Well, um, I mean, there's different exercises. I, I Give me mean, one. Yeah. Give mm -hmm. me one of the exercises. Okay. I'm so like, let's, let's see. Okay. So one lip, okay, lip trills. So. Lip trills? Lip, lip trills. Okay, lip okay. So trills. there's something called semi Sound like occluded for the strip club. vocal training. Okay, semi trills. occluded vocal training. And basically <clears throat> what that is, is you're singing like w without your mouth being all the way open. So you may do something like what we're about to do, a lip trill, or you may sing through a straw. And what it does is it allows you to vocalize, but you don't have to work as hard because you're singing through a, a, a smaller, a hole. smaller yeah, space. So a lip trill is like <laughs> So we're gonna do, this I don't is know if so I can fun. Do that. Oh, I can, I can. Yeah, you got those yeah. big ass lips. So we're just gonna do a simple. My lips ain't that big, is it? <laughs> okay. We're gonna do a simple. A simple. Okay, Jojo. <laughs> you just pooed it. What the hell? I ain't got no runs. I can't. Okay, what about? Me, I'm, I suck. Okay, what's well, something simple? Okay, well, you got the lip trill. You got the lip trill. I sound like a lawnmower. Yeah. It <laughs> sucks. Okay. But that's one thing um, you could do. That's really also good to do, like, after you finish singing. That's another thing. Cooling down is important, too. Mm. Because. You know, when you work out, you got to stretch before and after. Right. You, your voice is a muscle, too. So after you done killed the stage, you got to do something that's going to um, bring your voice back down, like cool your voice back down, because it could be, like, you know, overactive. Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, so that's, when y'all see me thing. out in public. Okay, yeah. I got to practice that. Yes. Don't think I'm tripping. You should watch the show and know yeah, what I'm doing. That exactly. whole exercise mm -hmm. all the way. Now, I, I'd like to ask people this question because, you know, just as a music connoisseur, it's just, you know, sometimes you don't get the opportunity to, you know, work with the people. Of, unfortunately, like Whitney, I don't know if you mm -hmm. ever met Whitney or work with Whitney, but if you can put together a song featuring two artists, dead or alive, who would they be? Dondria featuring who? Oh my God. Okay. Whitney's definitely Whitney. one. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. If I could put a song together with two other people Dondria, Whitney, and maybe Brandy. Oh, that's and a Brandy. good one. Ooh. Yeah. What, what that, that, that covers all the, the tones yeah. and the vocal classifications. Mm -hmm. I think that would be nice. What would y'all sing about? What, would you, what, what song would you write for you, Brandy, and Whitney hmm. Houston? What would be the context of the song? So my first mind is to do like a new aged, um, like sisterhood, like mm -hmm. some type of like woman, you know, best friend type of song. Um, yeah, and I think like the three generations, like I think that would be, I think that would be pretty dope. I do raw. too. Yeah. That would be raw all the way. I love that. Yeah. All the way. Man, this is a beautiful, beautiful experience. Now, we got to talk about your new EP before you get yes. out of here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Got to talk about the new EP. Um, you know, what's the motivation behind it, where people can find it, and all that good stuff. Yes. So, I do have a new EP out called Perspective. And, you know, the, the gist of it is I got a new perspective on life, on love, on music, and career, and just like literally everything. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I am in any way 
the same version of myself that you all were introduced to um, years ago. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think the same things are fun. <laughs> Um, I, I eat differently. I'm vegan now. Um, I'm, I'm transitioning out of drinking alcohol. It's a love hate thing, a bittersweet <laughs> thing because I still, you know, I still like to turn up. In mm -hmm. moderation. And, Anything, you know, everything is straight in moderation. Um, and even that is based off, that's a decision that's centered around my voice and performance. Like I just want to do things that contribute to my health and my wealth and, you know, just like my mind, you know, all the good things. Like, I just want to continue to become a better person. So perspective is touching on um, situations that I've gone through to get to this place, um, breakups with um, romantic interests, uh, breakups with friends. Um, what else is on there? Uh, and then kind of like inviting the listeners to to come on this like road with me. Mm -hmm. Like, let's 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 go on it together. Like, I don't want I've always looked at, you know, certain people like they go away and then they come back and then they're like this whole different image. And it's like, girl, we don't know you. So I wanted to make sure that I were was taking people along with me. Mm -hmm. um, I just started vlogging. Um, on YouTube so they can like see me on day to day and like see what's important to me see like how I'm living how I'm vibing now so they can get to know this new version of myself because I don't want to just pop up and be like okay I'm this brand new y'all what's up get my album you know like let's get to know each other let's talk yeah that's um, important. so it's that is what perspective is all about um, and it's on all digital platforms um, and it's good music I'm singing and I'm talking about some stuff y'all mm -hmm. yeah go get that go get it immediately yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go get that. Yes. We're doing a lot of that on that. Dondria, we are thankful and we appreciate you for coming and sitting down on the sure. couch with us here on 85. You are welcome to come back anytime to mm -hmm. do the podcast. Thank Whatever you. it is we got going on, you are welcome over here. You are a generational talent, and mm -hmm. I'm saying that sincerely because I have been a fan for a long time, and it is beautiful to see you still pushing and motivating and yeah. being as great as you are. Thank Dondria, you. ladies and gentlemen, the Ooh. one and only. We clap or snap. Thank you. And this is 85. I don't believe we were put together not to be together. And I don't believe there's anyone out there that can love me better. I don't believe that you know how much I'm missing your pretty smile. Of course we had our ups and downs, but I gotta have you around me, cause